How much of, of what you're working on or what might be in the future is nanotechnology a part of? We don't work on nanotechnology per se, but okay. there are certainly very respected scientists working in the area of what's often called molecular manufacturing, the creation of things that are a bit like enzymes or bigger machines in the body, but which are not made out of proteins the way the body naturally is. Instead, mm -hmm. they're made out of hardware, really, you know, out of non-biological material. The theoretical basis for that technology is very solid, very sound. It's highly likely, in my view, that in the distant future, we will have an increasing ab ability to exploit non-biological solutions to medical problems, especially as this miniaturization process progresses. And that eventually it could easily be that those non-biological interventions um, dominate. They become the major, mm -hmm. the major thing that we do. But I do think that we're a lot further off from having any of that inter those interventions really working than we are from the straightforward biotechnological approach that Science Research Foundation is following. Okay. Now, I should say that the miniaturization aspect is a key there, because, of course, there are non-biological solutions to medical problems that are macroscopic that are already in place and, indeed, are improving all the time. Obviously, we've had glasses for a long time. That's an example. Mm -hmm. We've also had cochlear implants, which are really um, the way to treat certain types of deafness. And those are getting better all the time, so much so that people are now talking about cochlear implants actually giving people better hearing than normal. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we've got artificial hearts, we've got you know, all manner of different things. So I do, definitely i am not in any way dismissing the non-biological component of medical research. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the nanotechnology a little bit, though, and what the theories behind, behind that is? Well, nanotechnology, or I, I, I need to be careful with the terminology here, because the okay. word nanotechnology was first used to describe what you're asking about, molecular manufacturing, mm -hmm. but now it's often used to, it's bundled together with something which is really material science, nanomaterials, where one is not actually putting atoms together in a precise way, the way that Eric Drexler and others proposed 20 or 30 years ago, but rather one is simply doing material science. Um, so molecular manufacturing, it's all about precisely positioning atoms in a form that makes not just a simple crystal structure, like a diamond, for example, but a structure that's been designed. So, in other words, they can, you can make actual machines of the sort that we would have today with gears and such like, but at the absolutely tiny scale, at the scale of nanometers. Mm -hmm. The average atom is maybe you know, a tenth of a nanometer across, <laughs> and um, atoms are maybe a... a um, one nanometer apart in a typical mm -hmm. molecule. Uh, and so putting them together one by one sounds pretty laborious, really, doesn't it? <laughs> but the thing about molecular manufacturing is that one can accelerate the rate of this by doing an enormous amount of the um, assembly in parallel. And a lot of the designs that have been done have taken this into account and have shown that realistically one should be able to actually construct these tiny machines that are, you know, a millionth of a meter across mm -hmm. or less uh, without actually having to wait until like a thousand years from now.